Hello jazz guitar fans, I'm Mike Hayes back with more fun on the fretboard. In this video we're taking a look at how Barry Harris creates those smooth sophisticated modulations from one key to another. So if you've been busy practicing your major sixth diminished scale and wondering just what to do next, this video will be a real game changer. There's a lot of information here. And of course, I'm talking about Barry Harris, but you'll hear these sounds all around you once you know what to listen for. You'll hear it in the music of Stevie Wonder, Quincy Jones, and a whole lot of other people. Now, there's a lot of information to digest, so you might want to sharpen your pick, grab your guitar, maybe grab your favourite beverage. I have a coffee here, so I'm just about set. I have my guitar, my pick, and my coffee, so. Let's get on with the show and see what we have in store for you today. Cheers! As we know from previous sessions, any note in a diminished seventh chord can be considered the root note. Therefore, a diminished seventh chord could potentially have six names. And I say six names when we take into account the enharmonic notes. So the shape on the screen at the moment could be named G diminished, D flat diminished, or C sharp diminished, B flat diminished, or A sharp diminished, or E diminished. Our first project will be to play a major sixth diminished scale using each note of the diminished seventh chord in the chord shape that you see in front of you. In other words, we'll play a harmonised G major 6th diminished scale, a B flat major 6th scale, D flat major 6th scale, and an E major 6th scale. Now, as we're playing through each one of these scales, I want you to pay particular attention to what you're playing, because the key to these wonderful Barry Harris style modulations will be under your fingers. Let's play the scales first. We'll begin with the harmonised B flat major 6 diminished scale. the G major 6 diminished scale. Here's the E major 6 diminished scale. Here's the D flat major 6 diminished scale. Did you spot the all important clue? Well, not to worry if you didn't. I'm going to take you step by step through the type of thinking process that we need to have to unlock the door to this wonderful world of harmonic beauty and freedom. On the screen you'll see a chart that is a review of all the scales and their related harmonies that we've just played. Now if we go right back to those early lessons on chord melody guitar, where we discovered that when we harmonise a major 6 diminished scale, the scale only produces two chords. A major 6th chord and a diminished chord built from its major 7th. 
Therefore, when we're playing the B flat major 6 diminished scale, the way I'm naming the chords is B flat 6 and A diminished. A being the major 7th of the B flat major 6 diminished scale. Now, when we move on to the G major 6 diminished scale, the way I'm naming the chords is G6 and F sharp diminished. F sharp being the major 7th of the G major 6 diminished scale. And it's the same process with the E major 6 diminished scale. The scale produces an E 6th and a D sharp diminished. D sharp being the major 7th of E flat. And so we continue the process in the key of D flat. The scale of D flat major 6 diminished produces two chords, the D flat major 6 and C diminished. C being the major 7th of the D flat major 6 diminished scale. Right, so what does all that mean? Well, a very important point is that the B flat 6, G6, E6, D flat 6 chords are all connected by the one diminished chord. If we think about it, the notes in an A diminished chord are A, F sharp, D sharp, C. So this chart could also look like this, or like this, or even this. It's just the way we name the chords. And if you went back over those harmonised scales that we played earlier in this lesson, you'd notice that the diminished chords that connect the various major six chords in those four different keys are all the same. So now that we know that this particular set of notes or keys are all related, let's have a look at one of the ways that Barry Harris moves between various related keys. Let's begin by playing the first four chords in the key of B flat major. That would be B flat major 7, C minor 7, D minor 7, and E flat major 7. Let's have a listen to that first. Since we know that the keys of B flat and D flat are related, one of the things that Barry does to modulate from the key of B flat to D flat major is that when he gets to chord 4 in the key of B flat, which would normally be E flat major 7, he plays an E flat minor 7, which in effect is where he's modulated into D flat major. E flat minor 7 being chord 2 in the key of D flat. And it's the same process if you want to modulate from D flat to E, you would play D flat major 7, E flat minor 7, F minor 7, which would be the traditional chords that we would play. However, when we get to chord 4, we would play F sharp minor 7 or G flat minor 7, which in effect is chord 2 in the key of E major. Once more, the same process again in the key of E. If we want to modulate to the key of G major, we'd play the first three chords in the traditional manner, meaning E major 7, F sharp minor 7, G sharp minor 7. However, when we get to chord 4, instead of playing A major 7, we'd play A minor 7, which is chord 2 in the key of G. And then if we wanted to continue that cycle again and return back to the key of B flat, we'd play G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, Chord 4 would be C minor 7, which once again is chord 2 of the key that we're modulating to. Okay, let's try that out 
I think you'll agree it's a pretty cool sound. Don't forget to pay particular attention to the fingering for each one of these chords. You'll see why that's important when we get to the next example. Here's that same progression with the various modulations into each key. The only difference this time is that I'm creating some movement with the middle voice in each chord. What I'm doing there is moving to the next note lower in the key. Okay, now here's something to get you thinking. Earlier we said that the four notes B flat, G, D flat and E are all related. Now this also works for dominant seventh chords and they're all connected by the same diminished chord. Here's one more example just to give you an idea of the potential of this type of thinking. I'm going to begin in G major modulate into B flat then I'm going to use some chords out of the G 7th diminished scale using that common diminished chord to connect the G 7th chords and then I'm going to finally resolve everything into the key of C major Well, that's it for today, folks. I do hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I hope there's something in this lesson that'll help you develop your own musical style on guitar. If you enjoyed this session and felt you got some value out of it and you'd like to support this channel, there's a link in the description below this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the good stuff. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a like. It really helps us out. Until next time, all the very best with your guitar playing. Bye for now.